I'm going to give a quick shout out to VZ8 in the house. Uh, Victor is a longtime fan. He used to go to my live panels and film me sketching and talking and, and posting those online. And he built his following up and uh, actually gets more views on his YouTube streams than the stuff I export on there because he actually edits the material, uh, adds bumpers, um, makes it digestible in, in finite amounts. And uh, the way I look at it, for now at least, um, is that it, it's it's promotion. It promote, he promotes the stream, he promotes my work. Uh, but anyway, he's, he's been a good guy, so no issues with that. So you guys uh, um, give him a cheer, give him some support. I think it can inspire everyone that you have to stick to something to, to, to make it kind of get enough. Get enough ballast to right your ship, get enough thrust to launch your missile, get enough lead to draw your sketch. All right, we're going to draw Supergirl. Here we go. Draw an egg. You know, when we used to have the uh, art studio, I might have said this before. All right, draw like a cylinder. That's the neck. Wildstorm, like we would sit around and, and, and talk about like slang phrases, like we'd wonder like how they got started. And now we're going to draw uh, an upside down pyramid or a triangle. They'd be like, hey, I just drew an egg on top of an upside down triangle. That's awesome, dude. You're cooking it. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're cooking it by the recipe. Hey, look, at the time it sounded really interesting. Uh, we have this upside down triangle. We're gonna. Here's the egg. If this is, uh, if we were quadrating, uh, if we're dividing the egg into one, two, three, or four, four parts. One, two, three, four. This would be the trop tropic of. Is it Cancer up here and Capricorn down here? This one here. Go down here. Halfway between this midsection and the edge of that egg. Put a dot right here. That's where the chin's going to be. All right, that's where the tip of the chin is. So let's go back down here. We're going to create that center line. Oh, boy. This is already too complex. From the from this triangular point, go straight out, straight up. Okay. Isosceles 30, 60, 90 triangle, I think. At the top of this triangle, put a fist. Drop down a line to the elbow. Ham hock bicep. She's going to be doing this. So now you can see that it's kind of this weird, awkward distance that ideally you could have moved over here. But I'm going to show you a little trick. She has a cape, so if I put the cape up here, little two triangles like that, like a little directional left blinker, right blinker, right signal left, signal right, for those of you who know how to drive. And we draw this cape over here. Now it looks like. I'm balancing out this closeness to this by having the cape, right? All right so here's that center line of the torso. You can see it kind of uh, angles off from the center line like that. Okay, I'll draw it a little like darker. And if this is the arm slot and this is the arm slot, That's the bottom of the rib cage, right? That's the torso. Okay, so the same way we had the center line coming down, it goes over the center of the chest, and then it dips back down towards the belly button. Its lowest point is at the belly button right there, and then comes back out here. Conversely, on the other side, the spinal cord in the back, the spinal cord goes like this, and a curve like this, and like that. And that's important because when we look at the curvature of the lower back and where the belly button is, that's kind of where the hip starts, right? And so if we're drawing like a big circle like that, that would be the hip or the waistline or the widest part of the hips. If this is the, um, the, 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 uh, the hips, right? The pelvis goes like this. All right, at this three-quarter angle. Think of a fly. If you were drawing a fly, and the fly had two eyes like this, and a proboscis like that, or is that a mosquito? <laughs> I think it's a mosquito, right? Just 
straw mosquito. Okay. There's one eye. There's the other eye of the mosquito. Okay, so... Right, back of the uh, pelvis is the the rear das boot and um, the leg one leg comes out of that and this other hip we're gonna go straight down like this now from this other shoulder go and draw another triangle arm forearm okay arm forearm slightly and then the ham hock right if you draw a uh, pig, okay, draw a pig, and you cut off the head and the legs, you get a forearm, ham hock, reverse mirror that right here. There's that ham hock. And that fist, the fist is a pentagon, or a pentagram, what a pentagon, right? Offset pentagon, pentagon, right? There we go. So if you go to, um, we have a Discord channel that is hooked up to this Twitch stream, and uh, there is a section, Draw Along. It's called Draw Along, and you can post up your your finished draw alongs at the end of this stream. Okay, see this middle line? That's the equator of this egg. Let's put an ear, sort of like Mr. Potato Head. You know, like the you know, Mr. Potato Head. You put one on this side. I'm gonna show a hint of it on the other side. From that ear to the other ear, we draw a line like this. The eyes are kind of along that, that line. The nose is kind of like a little V-shape like that. Okay. Now, this lip, this, the smile of hers, it's like an eyeball. Right? we got three eyeballs. Okay. So draw the eye and then subtract the eyeball there. Okay. Got that ear, the ear. <clears throat> if you draw a center line, continue that center line up. It should go about three quarters through that mouth, through the tip of that circumflex, in between the two brows, right there near the top of the head. That's where the hair is going to emanate out of widow's peak. Draw like a little happy dove, right? Happy dove. Okay, and then draw a wave crashing down on her head. And then uh, draw another big joker smile right here. Maybe a couple smiles. Remove all the teeth. Okay. Oh, we hit a thousand. <laughs> I start crying. <laughs> all right, my work is done. Thank you very much for... <laughs> Tuning in, we hit a thousand, man. That's really cool. That's pretty cool. Speech, speech, speech. Let me think. Let me tell you, this is cool. I, I, I feel like we achieved something collectively as a community. I want to thank all the mods, Kirhiko, Ren Elephant, Crispy, all the regulars that come out every single Sunday and watch this. Uh, I would say that you do it selfishly or selfishly, well, selflessly, but we do have giveaways. Like, I'm going to give away the Supergirl sketch. And uh, it's cool. We started this with just an idea and a dream. <laughs> End of August last year, and here we are months later, and we've broken through a thousand. That's cool. A thousand concurrent. If the internet's slow for you guys today, it's because of this stream. If you're having lagginess, I blame it on this. Thank you guys. So this point where uh, the clavicle is or the two collarbones uh, meet, uh, we're going to draw a V. That V goes up to the bottom of the earlobes. 
so you're not going to see the other side. Okay. I want to draw the underside of the chin, the hair, line it like that. Okay. Here's the tricky part, and I don't really know how to express it other than put the eyebrows above the eyeballs. <laughs> and these eyes are going to be almost like teardrops that are flying south, or flying south, flying sideways. That one's flying this way at an angle like that. And like that. So draw an X, and that gives you the bottom part of the eye and the top part of the eye. And what I mean by that is if you draw your X, there's one teardrop going that way, another teardrop going this way. It's kind of a I'm exaggerating there. Think of Spider Man. Two teardrops flying towards each other. Draw a circle inside the eyeballs. That's the pupil, I'm told. Where that uh, circum thing flex whatever, that's the nose. It looks kind of like a Michael Jackson nose. All right, we're going to, it's going to be a slightly upshot of a nose. And uh, what that is, is we're going to draw like a, a comma, an upside down comma at an angle, another sort of slash, and then another uh, kind of like a TP shape. This upper lip is going to help sell this nose. There's that offset mountain range. So from that center line where the, the dove was here, the lines emanate from that beak, come down here. Here's the wave that kind of crashes above. Their hair goes from the side of the temple to the back. Here's the ear. Just for the sake of making this simple, we'll, we'll do like a backward six. Okay. Now along this side here, we're going to go forehead, the line then kind of caves in back to, towards that eye, and then comes back out to establish the cheek and back down towards the chin. Underside the chin, neck, neck. All this hair is going to flow from maybe that top part of the ear on the other side of the head that we can't see. Try to have all the lines kind of going back towards that ear. From the top part of the shoulders, or the trapezius, I don't know what that's called, all right, the neck to the top part of the shoulders, the shoulders are going to be rounded, okay? We're going to make the biceps square. From the elbow, we're going to sag down a little bit, that line's going to sag, reflecting the, the bulge of the triceps, the ham hock. Got to practice that ham hock, guys. That's the forearm. Ham hock right here. Offset pentagram. And by offset, I mean that the center point of that penta pentagon, sorry, is offset. It's not in the center. Go back to that rounded shoulder. Boom, it's like the pipe, the tube. We're going to do the, all right? So from this side, we're not going to have that tricep because it's behind that part. We've got the belly button right here. We've got the the, um, the shadow of the belly button there. It's an N-E, N-E. So here's the, um, I would say that they, these are symmetrical lines, and they are symmetrical on an axis. And that axis is like right here. Think of a violin or a mandolin, or any other musical instrument. But it's Supergirl, so the shoulders are going to be a little wider than the hips. And on this particular hip, because we're going to foreshorten it, we're going to cut off a chunk of that. And the reason why I've done that is because this haunchy part of the side of the, um, 
of the hip is on the other side of the figure. And as such, all right, if this represents if this represents one hip, all right, and this represents the other hip. Okay. A, she's got asymmetrical hips. So walks with a, a lurcher. But watch, if I foreshorten it, look, I see more of this and less of this. All right? Got that? From that pelvic opening, that eye of the mosquito, that eye of the mosquito, there's that one leg. And then from the other part, if I were to draw through, if I were to draw through that, right? If you draw through, that's where it goes. We're not going to draw through because we're trying to establish three-dimensionality. Okay, so even though this is shaped like this, that's the construction lines of that particular leg and this leg here. Okay. The actual uh, trunk line, if you notice right here, that the highest point of that trunk, it's actually on the other side right here of that hip. But from that point of the hip, it comes down across. And so it actually, right? That's where that trunk would go. To do the mini skirt, it's just like hanging drapes. Okay, if you put um, an object like this, a stand, a mic stand here, and another shorter mic stand here, okay, and you throw, drop a, um, a square cloth like this and put it over here, it basically um, does this. And from this highest point where the material catches, you draw the drape lines like this. And then the bottom kind of flutters like that. And then you have some of the drape lines moving towards one another. And that's a good primer for clothing, folds in clothing. Okay? So think about the shoulder as having the high point here. It's a mic stand that's at an angle. You throw a cloth over it. A cloth basically does this. But if it's a long piece of cloth and it hits the ground, which is where the elbow is, it comes down and it bunches. Right? It is met with the force of reality, and the reality force pushes back on that cloth. It has nowhere to go, it cannot continue down this path. Happy full. Nothing in my way. I am free form. I am chill. I am going down as per the force of gravity. Oh, but boom, my molecules are colliding with something on the ground. The molecules can't get anywhere. It's a traffic jam of molecules. Yeah. And it creates like a big roadblock of molecules. So that's important because if you're drawing a shoulder with a bit of clothing on, you can see that, oh, here's the fold line and then it bunches up and then the forearm comes out of this bunching up of molecules and this material here gets bunched up inside because of the arm and those are, those are creases okay so it bunches here it undulates like this and it goes like that and draw the drape lines like this and then the back side We'll put the belt across, buckle here in the center. Okay, now we're going to do uh, the chest. So from one armpit to the other, we're going to draw an ellipse. That ellipse represents the volume of that, that torso. And then across the center point, this is the center point, we're going to put the, the S shield. Okay, see how the corners line up to that ellipse? Come in! Oh, they must be getting Nerf guns out of the closet, sorry. And the bottom of the um, diamond 
again, aligns with the center line that we established a long time ago. Now from this, uh, I, I draw the chest, uh, the ch this S symbol f flat on the chest, meaning I don't make it undulate with the, uh, the mammary glands or the pectoral muscles um, because I like the graphic kind of um, squared off look of it. I wanted to keep it as much a looking of a symbol as possible. I don't like it when like on Superman's chest you see like the in like the, the S shield kind of going into the crease in between the pecs. Makes me feel uncomfortable. So so out of this armpit, draw an S. Right? There's one breast. And then over here we're gonna draw a reverse S. On this uh, S symbol, I, I learned this from uh, reading an interview with John Byrne, you draw two fish, two goldfish swimming across from each other. Okay, there's one fish and here's the other fish, okay, and they're stylized. super S shield and then there's like a little bit of a gap there a little upside down triangle at the bottom all right so from up here we have the triangle the directional triangles that's where the cape is just like um, the microphone stands with the drapes right from that point that point the undulating bottom there we go Okay, a couple wrinkle lines. This we can just leave here. Draw um, a shadow of that knuckle. Well, that that's the knuckle, knuckle, knuckle shadow, right? If she had amantium claws, they would pop right there. I think that's it. I connect up to the bottom part here, like that. That's that part. I have a couple more wrinkles here. All right, the belt has, uh, these have to go in perspective. And then um, these. Underside of the chin goes here. One other thing, see where that ear is? The cheekbone comes right there, okay? The same way we saw this hip, but not this hip. There's that cheek right here. There's that cheek right here. If you think about the head in perspective like this, underside the chin here, here's one cheek. Here's the other cheek. See how we don't see that other cheek? It's on that side. Center line, right? There's her head right there. I'm gonna start inking and I'm gonna just basically start with the nose. So with, with inking, I'm not going to give you a tutorial on inking, but um, the idea is you basically use the pencils as a guide. And you kind of, the best way to ink is uh, just pretend like you're drawing. Don't be a slave to the pencils. Actually, redraw over the drawing. The head looked a little bit big to me, so I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit in the in the inking stage. Add a little bit of some flourishes here. I believe it was a magneto sketch. Uh, actually, probably the best sketch I've done in stream. 
yet and uh, he wasn't subscribed at the proper level so we had to take it away from him yes there was much adult crying to be had only okay I'm not going to finish inking it. Dying. If you notice, I'm not a slave to the uh, pencil line more like construction lines. What are we doing on time? We've got 10 minutes. Do a little bit of rendering there. This marker is also dying. Wunderbar, as we like to say in Germany. This, this whole stream. Sorry for that head bounce. And if you notice, this sketch has a little bit of a stilted kind of uh, feel to it because I was breaking it down into uh, these very basic kind of shapes like ham hocks and triangles and whatnot. Um, and the truth of the matter is, you know, if you're a working professional artist and you draw this stuff over and over, you start refining these shapes and uh, you start adding very small nuances into the shapes. And um, to me, that's kind of the difference between a beginner and an intermediary or an advanced artist is that ability to basically um, inject things that other people might not necessarily see or understand about the human form. And that's that X factor that the professional artists bring to it all. So if there's a little bit of a basic look to this, it's because, like I mentioned, it's about So now I can see where the pencil lines were actually kind of holding it all together and I can go back in.
We broke 12, 1,200. All the secondary accounts are on. Wait. Yeah. All right. Lips. Okay. Now I'm just going in and, and uh, cleaning up the inks, adjusting line weights. Hey, all right. So what I was saying about the stilted nature of the drawing is that if I were to draw this from scratch and not as a sketch along, I would not be making uh, some of the very kind of simplistic shape decisions that I did. I did that for the purpose of, of edification, of kind of walking you through some of the construction. But the actual shapes, I think, um, based on your style, tend to be a little more nuanced and uh, different and um, uh, therein lies sort of that, that extra magical level that an artist can bring to an illustration through um, the master, their mastery or their experience with all the forms and uh, kind of bending them to their will and uh, you know abstracting them into shapes that actually don't even look like reality that makes sense like when you get really good at this you can draw a parenthesis 6b parentheses and make it look like a nose all right Ever-loving mods. They're the ones that uh, help police this and make it a better place. They put a lot of effort and time into the Discord channel, giving you guys all the proper, most up to, up to me, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, the information needed on how to how to sub, how to find Discord, how to um, win free art, and. Uh, be lost without them so thank you mods for for that 
Um, in Circe, I'm just using this brush to uh, beef up some of the shapes. Actually, add some gray values. Why I'm doing this with a brush and not with a pencil, I don't know, but I'm going to break out the pencil in a second. And then we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna give these away. Next weekend, I will not be streaming, uh, as I will be in uh, Austin, Texas, for South by Southwest. So, um, thank you guys that have been checking in this entire weekend. It's been awesome. Having you guys join me for the Friday night stream, Saturday night stream, and the Sunday morning stream. And because there's a not a lot of rendering on the female form, so a lot of what I'm doing is with a pencil, just sort of adding some shadows. So we'll start with the uh, page of nose.
And those of you that wanted a ch more challenging draw along, I think you got it today. Uh, post your results, your final drawings in the uh, Discord, how we all did as a collective group. Whether my ham hawk uh, <laughs> group of instructions helped or hurt the case, I don't know. We could just, next time we'll just draw a face. Keep it easy. Easier. Okay, so I think we'll just go like this. Markers. I gotta get some new markers. These are just crappy. They're not giving me what I want. for all the Bob Ross fans. Happy clouds. more I look at it. Keep uh, smearing it. Uh, thank you guys for um, elevating this stream above a thousand concurrent followers or viewers. Very kind of cool moment uh, for the stream. Something we've been talking about amongst the mods for a while and uh, it seemed like it was uh, an impossible dream in that uh, we were kind of stuck at five or six hundred for several streams in a row. Um, so thank you guys, and I will see you soon, all right? Check out the Discord channel for upcoming stream announcements and schedules, and we'll see each other soon. Have a great one, all right? Bye-bye.